Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Friday, September 1st, and then we'll see how things are looking for Tuesday, September 5th. Please be reminded that the markets will be closed on Monday in observance of Labor Day. So I want to wish all of you a happy Labor Day weekend. Maybe you can get that last barbecue in or visiting with friends or going on a short trip or something like that. But just have a safe and happy Labor Day. As far as the market is concerned, we are still below average with volume. We're looking more positive, but we're still not trending yet. We're trying to see the ADX lines are trying to turn back up, but they haven't quite switched over to suggest that we're now in a new trend. We also want to be aware that next week, people are going to be coming back from vacations, from different things that they've been doing, taking time away. School is going to be starting, and you might have some money managers that come in and say, well, I think I'm going to dump these stocks that really didn't perform all that well lately, because we have a small group of stocks that have really been leading the market lately as well. So that can put some pressure on the markets overall. Please be aware that I am offering a free online course that will be on Monday, September 4th. That's Labor Day. It will be from 12 p.m. Eastern time to 3 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to do the whole course in three hours. I tried to do a test streaming with YouTube and Rumble at the same time, and it didn't work out so well. It's not so much a problem with YouTube or Rumble. It's where I'm at currently. They have a tendency to really throttle things back when you're trying to do some kind of a live broadcast. And so if you are wondering what's going to happen with that, I'll try to keep things up to date by going to the YouTube channel and then looking at the community tab. I'll have updates there if I have to switch over to Zoom. And then I'll also have a link there if we have to switch over to Zoom as well. But right now, I'm still kind of leaning towards doing YouTube and Rumble simultaneously. But that may change. All right, let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a higher open and prices rose above R1 right off the bat at 45.24. We went up to R2 at 45.14. Unfortunately, that was the high for the day. We ended up dropping back after that. As the day went on, we fell back below R1. We fell below the daily pivot at 45.16, and we came down to the unchanged level. And then we just chopped sideways, a little bit above, a little bit below the unchanged level. Right at the end, we saw a bit of a pickup, so we were able to close right at the daily pivot. We were up 0.18% on below average volume. And our technicals are still leaning more towards the positive side, but we're not trending right now. And I'll have charts to back that up. It's about inflation, interest rates, and growth concerns currently. So we'll want to see if these scenarios that we've been working with are going to shift as people start coming back in the upcoming week. Some comments. Small caps did well and value outperformed. So that really kept the S&P 500 and the other big indexes like the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100 in check in Friday's session, but the S&P is still above 4,500. Cleveland Fed President Mester, who will be a voter in 2024, came out and just said, inflation remains too high. So the market could have just tanked on that, and that did put some pressure on the market, but we also saw some more friendly Fed speak the day before so who knows? These people like to be part of the o Federal Open Mouth Committee. Rising interest rates and higher oil prices also acted as headwinds. We saw rates going back up after they had been falling. That put pressure on stocks. And a lot of times we can see oil going up with stocks at the same time. But then there are times when they get out of line with each other and oil starts to really go up quickly. And that can have an impact on the market. So that's why we do inner market analysis and watch different markets to say, okay, what's causing this pressure? Well, in Friday's session, some of that had to do with oil prices going up. We're still dealing with this current scenario, but we're wondering if we're seeing a shift. The scenario that we had been going with is that the economy is stronger than expected and that the Fed will need to keep rates higher for longer, okay? Well, over the last week and a half or so, the economic reports that have been coming out are weaker than expected. And that's where we're getting a bit of this boost from. And now we're going back and forth as to will the Fed need to raise rates at some point before now in the end of the year, 
or are they going to keep rates the same? And that's going to change every day as these economic reports are coming out. But there's also a concern about what's happening in China. A lot of S&P 500 companies do business with China, so this can really have an impact on their earnings. On a short-term basis, the list is still the same if you watch the video for Friday. We have the CMB composite, the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14 and 20, as well as the stochastics. Again, there are two ways to look at this, showing good momentum, but also giving us a potentially overbought condition. The dollar was up and interest rates were also up, and these provided some headwinds for stocks. We still have the yield curves that we follow that remain inverted. Sentiment is neutral. It ticked up from 53, where it came up to 56. And our trend is still positive. The green line is on top. And the ADX lines for both the short and intermediate term, they're trying to turn back up, but they're below 20 and they have not crossed over their moving averages yet. I'm keeping our bias right now at mixed because it really wasn't all that convincing of an update and everything might shift when we open on Tuesday as everybody's coming back. But I'm still keeping our momentum at positive. The economic reports that came out, this was the big one, the employment situation where the non-farm payrolls came in stronger than expected at 187,000. They expected 175,000, and that's up from the 157,000 that we saw last time. The market could have just tanked on this news. Private payrolls were also up greater than expected at 179,000. They expected 160,000, up from the 155,000 that we saw last time. This is kind of what kept the market a little more positive. The average hourly earnings were actually down from what they expected. It came in up 0.2%. They expected it to be up 0.3%. Last time it came in up 0.4%. The unemployment rate, this also could have helped the market stay more positive. It ticked up where it had been at 3.5. It went up to 3.8. They expected it to come in at 3.6. The work week was a little bit stronger than expected at 344 they expected it to be at 34.3. Last time it did come in at 34.3. The S&P Global U.S. Manufacturing PMI, it was better than expected at 47.9 and better than what we saw last time, but it's still below 50 overall, so it's showing contraction. And we had construction spending. Came in a bit stronger than expected, being up 0.7%. They expected it to be up 0.6%, the same as what we had last time. And then the ISM manufacturing, it came in stronger than expected at 47.6 and up from the 46.4 that we saw last time, but it's still below 50, showing that there's a contraction. Now, this week, we're also going to get the ISM servicing PMI, service providers, and that has typically been above 50, where we're seeing more growth in the service industry, where we're seeing some contraction in the manufacturing. Here's a look at the hourly earnings where they did decline in this latest reading, but they're still going up overall. We look at the payroll change where we've been seeing an increase throughout the summer months. And then looking at the initial claims that I talked about in yesterday's video, that's the red line where they're decreasing. But when we look at continuing claims, they had been declining, but now they're starting to turn back up. And the unemployment rate shot up from 3.5% up to 3.8%. Keeping an eye on the average VIX going from 1990 to 2022, that's the blue line that we see here. What has been happening in 2023 is the red line. And if we follow the same basic pattern, that means the VIX is going to go up, which can be negative for stocks since stocks go down when the VIX goes up. Haven't shown this in a while. The ulcer index is really dropping off. We drop below the moving average. This is another fear gauge that we look at. Here's the intraday chart where we did have a higher open. We went up to R2, came back down, came down to the daily pivot. Then we eventually broke below that, came down and actually went negative for a little while. And then we just chopped above and below the unchanged line. But then going into the close, we were able to come back up to the daily pivot. Looking at growth versus value, where we're still seeing this, even though they're on different scales, we're seeing the blue line outperforming the red line, which means growth continues to outperform value. But when we look at the ratio for the S&P, it didn't do all that well. It was below the unchanged line, meaning the growth was underperforming. 
and it didn't fall apart, but it didn't really show any follow through strength either. Keeping an eye on the VIX, where we're declining with the line chart and the bar chart, when we look at volatility, it's picking up just a little bit, which is pretty common before a three-day weekend. Crazy things can happen. Things might shift coming into the week next week. So we're seeing a little bit of pickup in the volatility of the VIX, where the VIX itself continues to decline. This is a little more positive with the five-period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio. We spiked up and started to come down. That was positive. But then we started to go back up again. That's negative. Now we're continuing to decline, and that could be positive for the S&P. Looking at the VIX to VVIX ratio, where we had been declining for quite a while, now we're starting to turn back up. So that's shorter term negative, and we want to keep an eye on this. Looking at the longer term equity put call ratio, where we have been declining, that gave good support to stocks, but we still continue to move higher. That's shorter term negative. We're seeing a bit of an improvement with our risk on versus risk off ratio. We had been going up nicely. Then we hit August. We started to come back down. Now we're seeing some improvement in this ratio is going back up. Looking at the advanced decline line, saw a little bit of a tick up on price, but we were pretty much flat based on volume. However, we're still above both of the moving averages here. So this is hanging in there for right now. We saw a little bit of an expansion of the new lows, but an even greater expansion of the new highs. This is helping our five period to turn back up and our 10 period is also turning up and looking more positive. The advanced decline ratio, both the blue line and the red line continue to be above zero. That's positive. This is a little bit negative. The accumulation distribution is dropping below the moving average. We wanna keep an eye on that. And that gave us a bit of a heads up as we were coming into the latter part of July and into the early part of August, we started to see weakness in this indicator. We don't know right now if it's just a one day wonder dropping below the moving average and then it'll go back up. But if we see many days where this is below the moving average, but price is still going up, that's a warning sign for us. Looking at the cumulative NYSE advanced decline line, showing some improvement. And then when we look at the regular advanced decline line, it's also coming back up and could potentially be breaking out above this previous high. When we look at our regular advanced decline line, studied in a bit of a different way, we're coming back above this upward sloping trend line. So that's showing improvement. This is a little more negative, the shake in money flow. We were looking more positive after Thursday and actually went positive. The red line is continuing to go up. That's the moving average. But we saw this drop down below zero on Friday. So that's a bit of a warning sign. Our shorter term indicators that we use, the Stoke RSI is still extreme positive. The Williams percent R, even though it declined, is still extreme positive. The CCI 14 coming down slightly, but still extreme. And the CCI 20 is just barely extreme positive. Here's the condition of our trend where we're trying to turn up with the ADX, but we have not crossed the moving average yet. We're below 20 as well. That suggests we're in a non-trending environment. We would default to the positive though, because the green line is on top, even though it's rolling over. With our shorter term ADX, also turning back up and trying to get above its moving average, but still below 20, we would also default to the positive because the green line is still on top. Seeing a little bit of overhead resistance here. We came up to this pivot line and then we dropped below that. Is that gonna present some kind of a problem? If we still maintain a positive stance, will we, we, will we be able to get above this pivot level and then close above it in the upcoming week? On the bottom, we see where volume really dropped below average. Looking at our stochastics, we're looking extreme positive in the short, short term, even though we came down slightly. We're also extreme positive in the intermediate short term, and we're turning more positive in the long, short term. Looking at the 20 period double and triple exponential moving averages, we're still above both of these lines. If we see the green line cross back above the blue line, that would turn things more positive in the short term. Then we look at our 50 period double and triple exponential moving averages. We're still above this blue line. And the longer we can stay above this, the more these lines will turn up. And if we get more into an intermediate term uptrend, we want to see the red line cross back above the blue line. The CMB composite is still extreme positive, even though it did decline. The balance of power has dropped below the midpoint and is looking more negative in the short term. The highest high and lowest low values. We're looking okay with the lowest low values. The red line is continuing to go sideways. We're above the midpoint and the midpoint is turning back up. So that's turning more positive. 
We haven't really come up to the blue line yet, which is the highest high value. We want to get up to this level and then see the blue line start to go higher to turn things even more positive. The TTM squeeze, another oscillator that I haven't shown in a while. It had been showing some improvement and now we're crossing above the zero line. So this is switching from negative to positive. The summation index based on price is continuing to advance as well as based on volume. The NYSE, which is a broader measure summation index, turning up based on price and volume. The mass index, we're not quite sure. We got almost up to the blue line and now we're starting to come back down. This suggests that we might see some kind of a reversal. Now, if we continue to go up, We'll have to see how this line reacts. Or if we start to go down, we'll also be watching that because usually we get well above this blue line, but that didn't happen this time. So we're not sure how strong of a signal this will be. The PMO, one of our momentum, one of our momentum oscillators, turning back up after giving us an extreme negative reading. That's turning things more positive. We're turning up based on price as well as volume. The PMO study, looking better with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are showing some improvement and we're flat to slightly higher with the PMOs that are above zero. Looking at the Swanland Trading Oscillator, this is showing some improvement also. We're advancing based on price and volume. We were a little bit flat with the volume, but this is not giving us an extreme positive reading right now. The ease of movement after dropping below zero had been crossing back above the midpoint, but we were pretty much flat in Friday's session. The BPI, haven't shown this in a while. We still maintain more of a positive stance with this because even though we were declining, we still stayed above 50 and now we're starting to turn back up and show some improvement. And here's another chart showing the same thing. So it must be double important. The NYSE bullish percent index after dropping a little bit below 50 has gone back above 50 and showing improvement. The NASDAQ 100 BPI crossing back above 50 even though we were flat in Friday's session. This is also showing improvement. We're getting up to the upper end of the Ichimoku cloud. Did this end up providing support? And will we be able to bounce up out of the cloud now? Looking at the 20 period simple moving average of the open high, low close, we're above all of these moving averages. And the longer we stay above this, the more this mini rainbow will turn up. If we start to fall, sometimes one of these lines can act as support. Looking at our oscillators, we're turning positive in the short term. We're also turning positive in the intermediate term. The TRIX indicator, which is one of our longer term oscillators, it's turning positive. We haven't quite, quite crossed over positive yet, though, with the KST. But overall, this is showing improvement. We're still above all of the plotted moving averages. And the longer we can stay above this, we'll take the 20 period moving averages and have them start to go back up. If we start to fall, maybe one of these moving averages will provide support. Then we're just about on the trend line. Now, please keep in mind that I draw these trend lines myself, so I might be a little bit off. After Wednesday, we were a little, actually after Thursday, we were a little bit above this trend line. And then after Friday, we came back down and we're pretty much right on the trend line at this point. So we haven't really decided whether this is going to provide resistance or support. Looking at our different charts, the Heiken Ashi is still positive, the Kegi chart is positive, the Renko chart is positive, and the three-line break is also positive. This is more negative. This is a weekly chart of the S&P showing the MACD continuing to decline. Looking at another weekly study with the PPO long-term, we're starting to flatten out here. We were declining in the intermediate term, but we're flattening out. And in the short term, we've actually been able to cross above zero. So this chart is showing improvement. This chart is a bit disappointing though. Growth is outperforming value for the S&P, but we're not really breaking out right now. We're still in a longer term uptrend, but in the short and intermediate term, we have been going sideways and even declining for a while. The Dow is also dealing with overhead resistance. We have this pivot level above current price, even though we still remain above the 50 period moving average. We're seeing some overhead resistance for the NASDAQ 100. It came at it came out and was able to get above this pivot point, but then we closed down below it. That's the negative side. The positive side is we broke out above this previous pre previous high and we're still above the 50 period moving average. Can we turn and continue to go back up from here? And looking at our momentum for the NASDAQ 100, we're showing a lot of improvement here. We've crossed above the moving average and it's starting to go back positive. 
The NASDAQ also dealing with overhead resistance at a pivot point. Can we break through that and continue to go up? Or are we going to fall back down to this 50 period moving average? Keeping an eye on the FIB levels for the NASDAQ, we're above the 61.8% retracement level. If we fall, will that provide support? If we continue to go up, that will make these levels, at least for the time being, less relevant. The FANG index is still above its 50 period moving average, and we're still in a longer term uptrend. Small caps also dealing with overhead resistance at a pivot level. We did see a lot of improvement this past week where it got back above its 200-day moving average, 50-period moving average, above this pivot level, but we hit resistance right at this daily pivot level. Looking at the Russell 2000 small caps, also showing some improvement above the 50 level with the RSI, that's positive. We're above the 50-period moving average, and the MACD is also turning up. But in the background, we've had a recent death cross. The mid caps also dealing with overhead resistance, but still above their 50 period moving average. When we look at mid cap growth versus value, we're not really breaking out, but we are showing some improvement here. Earlier in the year, this ratio was really leading the way in some aspects of the market. It would be nice if we saw some more strength from the mid caps. Keeping an eye on traditional Dow theory, we were up slightly with the Dow and the transports, but we're seeing follow through weakness with the utilities. Then this is a chart I haven't shown in a while. This takes an equal weight ETF of the discretionary and an equal weight ETF of staples. And then on the bottom, we do a ratio between the two. We're seeing quite an improvement here. Can that continue? And this is positive for the market. We did see interest rates really go back up in Friday's session, which means that we saw bond prices going down. We dropped below 50 with the RSI. We're working off of a recent death cross. The MACD is still positive, but beginning to roll over. And then the Staples to S&P 500 ratio. I haven't shown this in a while. This is one of our possible positive scenarios. When this ratio is going down, that often gives really good support to the S&P. Well, we were going down quite a bit in August, but the S&P was going down too. We really saw a drop off in this ratio in Friday's session. Will that end up helping the market? So what's our outlook for Tuesday? There will be earnings reports that are being released. The markets will be closed on Monday in observance of Labor Day. The technicals are still positive. We're showing what could be considered an overbought condition, but we're not trending right now. We'll get just the factory orders in Tuesday's session. And then we're keeping an eye on all the different geopolitical events. And that's why some people may not have wanted to go long before a three-day weekend because crazy things can happen. But right now, it's still about inflation, interest rates, growth concerns, and what in the world is the Fed going to do? Here is the calendar for the upcoming week where we're closed on Monday. We'll, we'll get the ISM non-manufacturing that will be coming out on Wednesday. We'll get the unit labor costs, the final numbers on Thursday. And then the consumer credit, these aren't real biggies. So we don't have as many influential reports coming out this week as we had this previous week. Keeping an eye on the Stock Traders Almanac statistics, we're positive for the Dow for Tuesday, September 5th, where we're neutral to positive with the S&P and the NASDAQ. Haven't received the updated charts yet. We're wondering, are we going to continue to see some kind of a bounce as we come into the part of September that sometimes can see some positive action? We're also wondering that same thing with the NASDAQ. Are we going to see follow through strength during our pre-election year? Here's the S&P 500, which sometimes starts out pretty positive for September before we see a bit of a pullback. We're just wondering if that's going to happen the way it has happened before. When we go back to 1950, it's not looking very good during pre-election years for the month of September. We're only up 33 and a third percent of the time. So our scenarios, we're not going with the down one right now because our technicals are positive, even though we're becoming overbought in the short term and we're not trending. So if anything, we're leaning a little bit. And if you're super aggressive, you might jump in using the up scenario. If you're more conservative, you might want to wait to see how things play out. You could also latch on to some sideways trends if you implement those types of things, those strategies, because the ADX, both in the short term and intermediate term, continue to be below 20, even though they're both starting to turn up. The warning signs. We're wondering, the convergence of the short and intermediate term bearish signals, 
Are we finally beyond that? We'll really only know that with a bit of hindsight. We just kind of have to speculate for right now. The longer term trend signals on the weekly chart for the S&P and the NASDAQ 100, we're still below those longer term trend lines. So that could signal that we're at a top. Seasonally and historically, August was a weak month. September ends up being a weak month as well, even though we might get some positive seasonality. The equity put call ratio is starting to turn back down. That could be positive, but we want to see more follow through with that. The cumulative new highs, new lows for the NASDAQ continue to show weakness. The three-month yield is still above where it was at back in 2007, and then earnings season on a case-by-case -case basis. The positive signs, we still have seasonality and setups that remain in the background that I cover in the weekly video. The daily special K chart and the weekly chart are at odds right now, where the daily chart is positive, the weekly chart is negative. The longer-term equity put-call ratio has been declining, but now it's starting to turn back up. So we're wondering, this might get switched over to the warning signs if we don't see that thing turn back down. The S&P is still above the downtrend channel upper line. The risk-on posture is starting to show some improvement after it had been seeing some weakness. The S&P 500 oscillators are showing a lot of improvement, and the NASDAQ 100 oscillator is also starting to turn positive. The S&P is outperforming utilities and staples to S&P ratio is declining. These often both give support to the S&P. The Russell, the small caps, and the mid caps are working off of recent golden crosses. Small and mid cap growth continues to be positive. The financial sector is still working off of a recent golden cross. The parabolic SAR daily chart continues to be positive, and the Copic curve generated a buy signal a few days ago. Our conclusion. We're turning more positive and we're slightly overbought in the short term, but we're not trending yet. So we can say that same thing in the short term look where we're just not trending right now. We're turning positive, but we're not developing a trend where we still remain positive in the long term. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a really nice weekend. I will be posting other videos over the weekend. So I will talk to you in the next video.